now in the studio we have Sean Lambert, the Women's Programme Coordinator for the Lesbian and Gay Foundation. Sean is here talking about the recent new plans to change the law so same-sex couples can get married to tell us more about the foundation. Remember, if you're watching at home, you can tweet us at Keys TV News to tell us any views you have on this. So hi Sean, thank you for coming to speak to us today. So um, what will this mean to the gay community if the law is changed? Um, so if the law is changed to allow same-sex couples to get married, it will be a really big deal for the lesbian, gay and bisexual community. Um, for a lot of people, it's kind of the last inequality in the law, the fact that um, we can't ca currently get married. So um, symbolically, it's really important for people to have that right. Could tell us a little bit more about what you do um, at the foundation. Um, so my role is a women's program coordinator. Um, I coordinate um, the program for lesbian bisexual women. Um, so we offer all sorts of support and information for lesbian and bisexual women, as well as social groups and um, we have skills workshops. But we also work with um, other organisations, people like the NHS or um, service providers, to make sure that they're considering the needs of lesbian and bisexual women when they're planning. Services. And what do you think needs to be done most to help out? Um, I mean, I think over the last 20 years or so, there's been um, there's been a big movement in lesbian, gay, bisexual rights within society. And certainly, if you if you look back over the last 10 years, all the different legislation changes um, coming in. And obviously, if, if same-sex marriage does get passed, because it's not it's not fully passed yet, that will be the last bit of legislation. But I think there's still a societal change that somewhat needs to happen. Um, just a sort of understanding of um, people's needs, and there is still a lot of prejudice and discrimination out there that people face mm -hmm. um, so you know the um, the lesbian gay foundation's motto is we're here if we if you need us and that's for anyone whether they identify as lesbian gay or bisexual or if they know someone who does or they've just got some questions so you know people can get in touch with us yeah what are the biggest issues that surround this so like the like the obstacles that are, are, are pausing um, obviously it, you are wanting it to be passed so what are the biggest obstacles would you say um I mean, obviously, uh, there is still a minority of society who would um, prefer that there's been gay people wouldn't have the the right to marry um, and there is ob obviously the religious element and um, mm. some um, churches have been very vocal about them not wanting um, same-sex marriage. What I would say is you know the legislation that's before Parliament at the moment would not force any church to um, carry out same-sex marriage and some churches have um, actually come out and said yes we want to be able to do this. People like the Quakers and the Unitarians, other religious groups have said yes we want to be able to offer this. So um, personally I think it should be down to the individual religious groups and certainly I yeah. know um, lots of people who identify as either Christian or other religions who are very pro same-sex marriage. So. so what's next for the Lesbian Gay Foundation? Um, we are um, we're a nationally significant charity. We provide services to around forty thousand people each year. Um, so we and basically we want to keep doing that and keep raising awareness. Um, we are d d developing our Enough Is Enough campaign, which is um, tackling homophobia wherever it, it rises its head, basically, and raising awareness of that. And um, personally, working on the women's program, it's quite a new line of work to have it focusing directly in on lesbian and bisexual women. Um, quite often. Often within when, when you hear the word gay people think of gay men and gay men's needs and um, so it's quite um, exciting to have that focus especially around the sort of health and well-being needs of lesbian bisexual women um, so over the next few years we'll be doing a lot of research and talking to a, a lot of service providers to make sure that those needs are met. Do you feel that the um, focus hasn't been on lesbian and bisexual women? Um, I think I think the thing is that within society, when someone says the word gay, quite often people think of men. And completely yeah. understandably, um, a lot of the activism historically has been around gay men's sexual health. Obviously with the um, AIDS epidemic, there's a re very real need for that. Um, but that doesn't mean that there's not health and wellbeing issues that lesbian and bisexual women face. And it's really good that we get to focus in, in on those. It can be quite isolating. Um, to be a lesbian or bisexual woman because even when you go to gay spaces you can be in the minority yeah. so um, it's, it's kind of understanding that and understanding that yes it's great we all get along but sometimes needs are different yeah how many um, people are actually at the foundation how many staff members or how many how many, how many staff members are there and how many people um, does the foundation help 
So I think we have around uh, 30 staff members. Um, we have about 160 volunteers who are absolutely great yes. and we couldn't do what we do without their complete dedication. And like I say, about 40,000 people every year that we help. We run a helpline that's open 10 till 10 sort of every day so people can phone up. Mm -hmm. People can also drop into the cent <coughs> sorry, drop okay. into our centre um, if they just need to talk to someone, you know, just for a few minutes. Yeah. We run all sorts of services from there so I mentioned before we have social groups we offer counseling so what um, do these social groups entail um, so we have your average day yeah so um, we have various different social groups for different things so so we run like an art class which is just basically you know come and learn yeah. some art in yeah. in that sort of surrounding we have a social group for lesbian bisexual women called carousel and it's just a safe space to come and meet some other women and how, um, how many women to actually come to that it really varies week to week. I'd say around 30 usually. Yeah. Um, we also run one called Stepping Stones, which is more for women who are just coming out or are a bit yeah. unconfident and, and need that bit of extra support as well. Is there an age group that you find is more common um, in that group? Like younger younger girls or... Um, is, there, is there any older be, women who To who be honest, out? it's a real... It's a real age range, and I think there is this perception that you know people come out when they're like in their teens or early twenties, but actually people are still coming out when they're in their seventies, and yeah. a lot of people, you know, either didn't realise that they were lesbian, gay, or bisexual when they were younger, or were growing up in a time when it was really socially unacceptable mm -hmm. to be out. And I mean, we had an event on Saturday um, called Sugar and Spice, which is our celebration of International Women's Day. Mm -hmm. We had a panel discussion at the end of there of like six local inspirational women talking about their experiences. One of the women on that panel was 78 and she sat there and said, this is the first time I have sat there in public and said, I'm gay. She said, you know, I've, I've been with my partner for 37 years, but it's the first time she's a, a singer, so she, she was Sometimes, there in public. Yeah. So it's the first time I've sat there and in public said, I'm gay, because when I was growing up in the 1950s, 1960s, it was completely unheard of, and there's no way you ever would have... So did she have relationships with men? before she came out or was she? Um, she, had a, she had boyfriends when she was younger yeah. and then she'd had, like obviously she'd been with her current partner for 37 years. Yeah. But just, it, it, I think we forget that people were, you know, just completely isolated and families would, and still do to a certain degree, but, but back then families would disown or just completely ignore. So those, those relationships were never acknowledged. So it was just, oh, so-and-so's friend. And you know that kind of shut it off. So, and you know a lot. I mean, I'm in my 30s. A lot has changed since I came out, sort of 15 mm -hmm. years ago. Um, What's so, changed? Um, people have just come out a lot younger. It's become a lot more visible. I mean, I came out when I was at university, and I still had people being completely shocked, and I was the first gay person they met. Mm -hmm. I think for a lot of people at university now, that might not be totally the case. Totally different, yeah. yeah. Um, totally different. Certainly, when I was at school, no one was coming out at school, and now I think a lot more people are coming out when they're 15, 16, yeah. which is really positive because people feel that they can do that, but it also opens the other difficulty is that there's more awareness of it and there's more likely to be bullying and, and name calling and that sort of thing going on. So so there are the flip sides really. Yeah. So people in that position coming out, what would your advice be to them? Um, I would say um, think carefully about who you're going to tell first and how you're going to tell them. I think a lot of people it is that thing of, oh my God, I need to tell someone, oh, I'm going to get drunk or I'm going to have an argument and I'm just going to blurt it out. And then if they don't react well, then all is lost. Um, they can always call us. Our helpline is 08453 30 30 30. So just if you want to talk through what your plans are, who you're going to tell first, what you're going to do if they react badly. And I mean, pick who you come out to first. If, if one of your friends is always saying homophobic stuff, they might not be the first person you speak to. Um, you know, so, so just kind of think it through and, and have a plan and make sure you know where you can get support from, whether that's from an organisation like the Lesbian Gay Foundation or from someone you know, friends or family, um, so that if anyone does react negatively, you've, you've got that sort of that support behind you, yeah.
Do you go to any schools or colleges, universities, and do any talks? That's not personally my role, but yeah, the Love Being Gay Foundation does quite a lot of work going out into schools, and we actually have a, a toolkit for schools around um, incorporating lesbian, gay, bisexual issues within the curriculum and um, and tackling homophobic bullying. So, um, if anyone wants to buy one of those toolkits um, for a school, they're, tw they're twenty pounds, and they can send it to a school of your choice. Um, so that's actually quite popular. Um, quite a lot of people we know sort of buy one and send it to their old school to sort of say I, I maybe didn't have the best experience you need these these tools and some schools are great at tackling that and some schools mm -hmm. not so much so are you doing anything for comic relief um, personally, I probably will be watching the, the everything that's on tonight and making yeah. a few donations. <laughs> I'm not getting dressed up this year, no. <laughs> okay. Thanks Thank for coming much. in, Sean, on your Thanks day off as well. Me. Really Thanks. appreciate Thanks so it. Thank you.